Cardinals, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the, um, they're telling me to speed it up here. Uh, St. Louis Cardinals haven't even touched this wall or that wall. Uh, the St. Louis Cardinals come to town for spring training uh, uh, against the Philadelphia A's. Connie Mack and Branch Ridgey, and, and also um, we have uh, Roger Hornsby in town. All right, so th they're, they're having their spring training here in Brownsville uh, because of the weather. The park was not anything special. And the other thing leaving 1920 was we had a Afro I'm sorry, an African American baseball club here in Brownsville in the 1920s. The Brownsville Black Boosters. It was a celebration of Juneteenth on this Sunday afternoon, coming up in a month from that period. They had no uniforms. So the merchants, Elstein, Hicks, and the rest, you know, donated a dollar, two dollars, fifty cents. By Juneteenth of 1920, they had their uniforms. And they celebrated Juneteenth with a baseball game. The Brownsville Black Boosters. Later, they become the Brownsville Black Tigers. This is all in, in the 1920s. Moving to this wall in 1938, real fast, like we have a, our, our second professional baseball team, the Brownsville Chattels. And thanks to Mr. W. W. Reed, who is right here, he is the bat boy, or was the bat boy. And this photo comes from his personal collection. This is he at about 12 years old, right? Something like that. Well, anyway, he is here today. The bad boy, just like I started like a bad boy, he started like a bad boy also as well. This club had a tough time on the diamond. Very, very tough time. This is the thing that, that people ask me, is there any local ball players in this team? Because most of them, like, like the brothers, were all out of towners. Maybe they lived here. But, but this ball club had the Crossy brothers. Remember George and Gus? Ah, they were part of this ball club. And later, um, your dad, La Burra, was part of this ball club. And also El Guero Perez. But, but, and, and, and Ramos was the other one, Egilio Ramos. Later, this club won 30 ball games and lost 130. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were not a very good ball club, okay? Uh, the Harlingen Hubs won the title in 1938. But the other thing that I want to mention is that we had an official scorekeeper at the Chattel Park. Where did they play? The Chattel Park, in the grounds of St. Joseph's Academy. Okay? That's where that ballpark was located. No lights. So because you have no lights, who's going to go to a ball game at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Steaming hot. Small population. Economy is not the greatest. So they lasted one season, 1938, and that was it. The official scorekeeper was Martin Rutledge. <laughs> and this is, this, is, this is him right there. He was, while he was not selling hamburgers, he was keeping score. A brief little story about the hamburger wars of 1930s in Brownsville. There were two guys in town selling hamburgers. The Rutledges, remember? Yeah. All right. And there was El Negro Benavides on 13 and Jefferson, 13 and Adams, El Negro Benavides. El Negro Benavides was selling the hamburgers for five cents. And Raleigh says, what, the, what are you doing? You know, you're killing me. I'm selling them for 10 cents, you're selling for five. <laughs> so they had to go and, and, and compromise and they sold the hamburgers for five cents. It's the Hamburger market. Awards of the 1930s. <laughs> what about Vermilion? Well, Vermilion was upper class. Their hamburgers was 25 cents. Uh, oh, that was, that, was, that was expensive back then. And air conditioning. Uh, yeah, and air conditioning. Um, you have the names of the ballplayers here, and uh, they, they lasted just one season. Let's move to this other wall over here. And I was going to ask you to stand up and face that wall, but you don't have to. Yeah, I'm not going to make you stand up. I'm going to go as fast as possible here. Um, 1949, even earlier than that, the Lions Club gets involved. 1939, the Lions Club, and during that period of time, there was a lot of juvenile delinquency around the country. Not only around the country, but also in Brownsville. So what the Lions Club were saying is, we want to create a recreational center for the kids from Brownsville. 1939. The property was at St. Francis but 
There was a lot of litigation. BIZ obtained the property. Lions Club leased it 